Welcome to all of you, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us at our celebration of Mass and watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget to help hit the bell button to get all of our YouTube messages. This is the final week of our summer series we are calling Faith Answering Questions. We will be answering questions about our Catholic faith, sometimes tougher questions, and maybe even questions that are controversial. So let us set some ground rules. We are going to answer them from the perspective of people who believe in the authority of God's word as revealed in scripture and the authority of the church as revealed by tradition, which means the consistent teaching of the Catholic church through the centuries. We believe that Jesus is the authority on life and that his church subsists in the Catholic church, meaning that it is in the fullness of his truth. This week's daily reflection come in response to the questions we are answering in the message series during the homily. Next week, we start our new series called Cornerstone. It is a good time to start this series since it is a start of fall and going back to school. It is a great chance to remind ourselves about our vision, mission, and core strategies. You will find messages in a bulletin and a daily reflection that will be sent to your email address. If you have not yet shared your email with our office, please do so. Just a reminder that you can always catch past messages for this series on our YouTube channel, Most Holy Trinity Parish, Susquehanna County. If you are away from your faith, thank you for watching. As a church, we are trying to stay connected to you. Know that we miss you and are praying for you. As we begin our Mass, center your heart for today's message. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us every sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, you we glorify you. you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God Heavenly King, King O oh God, God, Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have a mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have a mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, 
I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul, my soul is thirsting, thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My, my soul, soul is, is thirsting, thirsting for, for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live, lifting up my hands. I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast upon you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips to proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello again, everyone, and so glad to be with you and have been praying for you and hope uh, all is well as we continue uh, to hunker down in these days of the 
COVID-19 virus. Today we're hearing about other people and the history of our salvation who also had their times of trial. And of course, uh, with Jeremiah, he went through some very difficult times because he is living in a time when the people were getting ready to go into exile because of their sins. And so as God is watching what's happening among his people, uh, even though we know God can't suffer, there is a, uh, an expression, a type of anguish that God experiences when he sees the possibility of uh, souls being lost, of his people uh, being taken away uh, from him in a sense because of their sins. And so the vehicle he's going to use to call them back at first is going to be Jeremiah the prophet who is going to speak the word of the Lord to them, challenging them to get, give up their sins and come back to being faithful to the Lord. And so he is saying, you know, that he didn't really want to get into this in the first place because he was afraid it would uh, lead to a lot of suffering, rejection among the people. And of course, that's exactly what has happened. And so now Jeremiah is saying to God, you duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You know, I, I said at the start, I'm too young, but you said, say not, I'm too young. I'm going to be there uh, with you. And so uh, Jeremiah, he's been ridiculed, he's laughed at. He said he's sport for every passerby, uh, and, you know, uh, he's been calling out uh, uh, violence and, you know, uh, trial, his, his message, uh, because God is seeing the way people are treating each other, violence in the community, and all kinds of sin, and God wants us to act in a human, in, in human way, and so uh, Jeremiah is calling them back, and he actually stood in front of the temple, and he was calling out, this is the temple of the Lord, but you're coming into the temple and you're not repenting. You're not setting aside your sins. And so all the stuff you're doing here is going to come to nothing and you're going to end up going into exile. Well, there were other prophets at the time who were claiming that they would not go into exile, or if they did, it would be for a very short uh, time. And so Jeremiah rejected, put in prison, threatened with death, and yet God's plan is for to, re to reform his people. They're going to go into exile, and just like for the 400 years in Egypt, he formed a people of his own and brought them into the Holy Land, he is going to keep them there for 70 years until they are reformed again, faithful to the covenant, and then he'll return them uh, to their land. And so there is suffering necessary to proclaim the message. There's going to be suffering necessary to be reformed again as the people of God. And so what we need to know, and we're going through tough times, is we have to keep our eyes on the Lord and on his word. Uh, he doesn't promise us we won't have any trials, but he does promise if we're faithful to him, he will get us through. Well, in the gospel today, uh, Jesus, who has just received Peter's profession of faith, and he proclaimed him to be the rock, and on this rock he's going to build his church. And now he says we're going to have to uh, basically reveal to them what this message is going to be all about. And so he begins to let them know that he's going to go to Jerusalem to suffer, to be put to death, and rise on the third day. And Peter, who's only taken his first couple of steps as the rock, uh, falters here again, and we know what he said, you know, this will never happen to you, Lord. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, because your words are not God's words, but men's words, and other, and we could say, he is saying something is going against the Father's plan, and only Satan would do something like that. The Son of God wouldn't, and a future Pope shouldn't do that either. So Jesus knows that this is, he said, I have to go to Jerusalem. That means it is the Father's will, and he knows for the salvation of the world, he's going to die on the cross, and he's going to rise on the third day. Not an easy thing to do, but just like there was a fire in the bones of Jeremiah, in Jesus, he says, I have this baptism to be baptized with, and I'm in anguish until it's accomplished. Not in anguish that I wish I could avoid it, but I really want this to happen so that I can pour out the Holy Spirit on the world, and I can bring salvation to all those who will be willing to turn and come to me. And so as we see the experience of Peter and the others at this time in their trials, we know later on, once the uh, Holy Spirit comes to them, then it will be very different, and they will very willingly embrace the Father's will, uh, even going to their own crosses or different ways um, of martyrdom or different trials they would experience. Maybe St. Paul summed it up the best. He said, 
You know, I am crucified to the world and the world to me. In other words, anything that goes against the Father's plan, everything that doesn't go along with my following Jesus and living in the Holy Spirit, all of that I set aside just so that I can keep my focus on the Lord. And so we got to watch out. We don't fall into that trap that Peter did when somebody says, I'm getting married. We don't want to turn to them and say, now, why would you want to do that? You're young, you got a lot to live for, you could have a lot of fun. Why don't you just live your life for a while? But if it's the Father's will that they be married, we don't want to get in the way. Or a priest or religious, if they're entering into that vocation, and we're saying, now, why would you want to do something like that? You can't get ahead in the world if you're following that type of vocation. But if that's the Lord's plan, again, we don't want to get in the way because if we're blocking the plan of God, uh, we could be doing great harm to the soul of another and even to ourselves. And today we just pray the Lord to help us to recognize the call to carry our own cross and so gain eternal life in the process. So we're going to ask a, answer a couple more frequently asked questions. Why do Catholics pray to Mary and why do we have statues in our churches? Well, actually, we don't pray to Mary, but we imitate what we see at the wedding of Cana. Uh, the, the wedding, the couple had, the party was going on, they ran out of wine, and so they go to Mary first, and they ask her to intercede with Jesus about this problem, and she goes to Jesus and says, they have no wine, and we get that response, you know, woman, how does this concern of yours affect me? In other words, I'm not really ready to start this ministry with this miracle, but at your intercession, I am going to do that, and I'm going to start to reveal my glory. And so we just simply ask the Blessed Mother to pray for us, because we know at the cross, uh, for us Catholics, when Jesus said it to John, Behold your mother, and woman, behold your son, that was the Lord uh, bestowing his mother as mother of the whole church, just as he is the head of the body, and we are all members of the body of Christ. She is not a member of just the head, but the whole body. And so we have great reverence for her, but other saints too. We can ask them to pray for us, just like I ask my friends and family when I have an intention. Uh, how about helping me to pray for this? Because Jesus said, where are two or three of you together uh, asking anything in my name? That'll be given to you. And so rather than just try to do it all myself and go into the Lord in prayer, I want to do it the way he told us to do it, and then that is to get others to pray along with us, whether it's in the people here in the church militant in the world, uh, the church triumphant in heaven, or the church is still in its suffering in purgatory. Why do people have to go to a priest for confession? Well, in the fifth chapter of the letter of James, he says, we should confess our sins to one another. And the early church took that very seriously, and they did it literally. And so when the whole community was gathered together, people would confess their sins in front of everyone. And you can imagine if there was someone who did something like commit adultery or other sins uh, like that, uh, that's going to cause some uh, tension within the community because they're all going to be wondering, well, who is the other person involved uh, in that sin? And so over time, uh, they decided that the, the presbyter, the, the priest, would be the one to hear a person's confession in private and would be kept secret. Uh, and so we know the priest is in persona Christi, so he represents Christ, the one who is going to really be giving that uh, gift of forgiveness to the penitent. But the community is also sinned against him. We said before, whenever I commit a sin, I'm letting evil out into the world that's going to do harm to the whole body of Christ. And so the body, the, the community has to be part of that. And so the priest also rec uh, represents that community of the body of Christ when we receive that very precious gift of the forgiveness of our sins. And our last question today, what does our church teach about private revelation? Okay. Well, the first thing we need to know is that uh, the public revelation or that which comes directly from God that we find in the scriptures, our tradition, the magisterium, that was pretty much all settled with the death of the last prophet. Not that we don't continue to have new teachings and different ways of trying to understand that deposit of faith, but there's really only one uh, public, as we say, uh, revelation for us to follow. So that's first and foremost. 
but we do have the gift of prophecy within the church, and sometimes uh, somebody like the Blessed Mother might appear to someone uh, and speak to them, and sometimes they're called to share that message with others. If we go all the way back to the very early church, we have St. Polycarp, who was the Bishop of Smyrna, and we know he became a martyr. He was back far enough that he actually knew the apostles, uh, but towards the end of his life, he was praying, and he had some other <clears throat> people with him, and he had a vision of his pillow being burned to cinders. And he turned to his companions and he said, uh, I'm going to be burned alive. And three days later, he was arrested, and the people were calling for him to be thrown to the lions, but the emperor said, well, I can't do that because I've already you know, commanded that the games with the wild beasts uh, have you know, come to an end. And so the people started yelling for him to be burned, and so uh, that's what they did. And so that would be a revelation just for Polycarp about something was happening there. We've got others like Fatima, you know, Lourdes, Divine Mercy, Medjugorje. We want to take a look at them and make sure that any private revelation is something that is not claiming to correct anything that the Lord gave us or to add to it or to change it but that it helps us in our present day uh, with remaining faithful to the Lord. Usually it's a call to prayer and conversion. If there are other things, we can follow through as long as it's not something the church is telling us is off base, especially if we have one that's been approved. We can take prudent steps to maybe follow uh, what we're hearing so that we can be pre prepared for any calamity like Joseph in Egypt who was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream about seven years of famine, followed by seven years of uh, plenty, so that they could be saving up the food during the time of the first period of the plenty to be ready for the time of the famine. So uh, hopefully that'll be a little bit uh, helpful, and we'll continue to, to pray for each other as we move ahead. Together let us profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us offer the Lord our prayers and petitions. For the church, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will embolden us to give witness to God and to courageously follow the examples of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to follow Christ that we may embrace the cross as we experience opposition, hardship, or rejection, and allow God to raise us to new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of discernment, that the Spirit will guide us in our judgments and actions so that the gospel can be manifest in our lifestyles, families, and professions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect and appreciation of human life, that we may recognize God's gift of life in everyone and strive to honor and support that life in each person that we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who are discouraged by the burdens of life, that the compassionate love of God will renew their hearts and lead them through their struggles. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that God will free the human family from the coronavirus. Guide all who are searching for treatments or a vaccine and protect all who are vulnerable from the disease. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for the sick and the dying, especially those with cancer and COVID-19 virus, and all who are on our prayer list, that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community of faith and our silent prayers. For Most Holy Trinity Parish, that we have a greater unity in the church and we may be one in faith, one in hope, and one in the peace of the Holy Spirit. And for all who have died, our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners, that God will open wide the door for them and welcome them to the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Joseph Adonado, for whom this mass is being offered, may the Lord grant him eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these and all the prayers we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept a sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace at our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the, the sins, sins of the world, world. have and mercy on and us. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you.